Lotus Fanatics, I am back. Brent Cook and we are playing Pioneer Lotus after the release of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, which means that we are playing Beseju Who Endures. And if you're unfamiliar with Beseju Who Endures, it is a legendary land that taps for a green. And then it has an ability called Channel, which is discard this card from your hand, pay this cost, do this effect. It is not a spell. It's just something that goes on the stack because it's an ability. So the cost for Beseju is one and a green. And then what it does is destroy target artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land in opponent control. So you can't target your own stuff. And then that player searches their library for a basic land type and put that onto the battlefield. This ability costs one less for each legendary creature you control. So I say basic land type because it can get not it can get non-basic lands. It doesn't have to get a basic land. It can get Zagoth Triumph, for example, which we're playing today because it is a swamp, a forest, and an island. Those are basic land types. It can also get shock lands. So it doesn't have to get basic lands. You could even get something like Mystic Sanctuary in Pioneer because it's not banned in this format. Uh, so that's what it's doing today. And a quick story for you. I did three drafts of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Thursday night. I was lucky enough to open up two of the Chaser in the set, Beseju Who Endures, which allowed me to start testing lists. And then Friday morning, I did another draft where I opened up a third copy of Beseju, running really, really hot, right? Like super lucky, I'm aware. And then I did another draft Friday night where I didn't open up a Beseju, but I went 3-0 and my packs had a Beseju in it. So I had the full set and I could start testing out different builds of Pioneer Lotus combo because my initial thought was like, well, I want to play the deck that's going to run four of them, right? So I started testing builds, and one of the first things that I noticed was that Wish doesn't play well with these new channel lands, because Wish says that you can play the card from your sideboard. Well, you can't play Beseju from the sideboard and get the channel effect. You can put it onto the battlefield, but that's it. So not really what we're looking for. And so I started thinking about if I still even wanted to play um, Wish. And one of the benefits of Wish, in my opinion, is that you get a super lean win condition with Niv-Mizzet, which is a really, really powerful card, right? Like, it's just fantastic. So you do have the ability to play Wish and Niv-Mizzet, but in order to run Niv-Mizzet, you have to run Veilcut Awakening, and it's this package. Well, when we're playing all these legendary lands, we start cutting into that package quite a bit. And with Wish not working with the channel lands and that package taking so much, I reverted back to... Close to the Leer list that I recorded with last time, and then I started making adjustments. So what you see in front of you is where I ended up at, but this the, this was a long road here. I didn't just throw this together. Uh, I did a couple leagues with Pioneer, and this is where I ended up. So uh, I'm going to go through it and explain my thought process, but it wasn't simple. And I think we can just start with the two copies of Beseju Who Endures. So... I was initially running two main, two side, and then I was just boarding them in all the time. And what I noticed was it was actually kind of hard to board in four copies at all times. So I ended up going, one thing I was doing was I was always leaving one in the board, but it just never gets used. So I feel like that slot was actually sort of a wasted sideboard slot. So I would recommend boarding in the Beseju and then just not leaving any in the board because it's so unlikely with only having two wish effects in your deck that you ever wish for Besage you instead of just drawing it naturally or Sylvan Scrying. So uh, I would just recommend playing three. You can play four. There's nothing wrong with that, but I, I think three is the, the perfect number. And we still have four copies of Botanical Sanctum, best land in the deck with no wish. We're playing four copies of Lotus Field, super powerful card. And then we're going to skip over Adawara, Soaring City and come back to that. And then three copies of Temple of Mystery. The fourth became the Triome because we need uh, a basic land type to search up for opposing copies of Beseju. So I think four tap lands is the right number. So I'm running three and then one. I was originally running three Bark Channel Pathway and two Temple. But when you do the math on how the mana breaks, breaks out, we still have four tap lands and then the same number of untap lands. Those untap lands became Beseju and Atawara where the, the math checks out is what I'm trying to say. Like you're getting two of each. You're just not getting the choice. That said, you are getting upside on each land. And I ended up losing the fourth copy of Balaged Recovery, which is a card that I've always been really crazy about. Like I love Balaged Recovery. I've played four in my list since it's been released. Uh, but every other Lotus Field list plays three. And 
The upside of playing one more real land is you get another uh, land for a Boreal Grazer. So today's the first time that I will be playing three copies of Balaged Recovery in a, in a recorded league at least. And I'm excited to see how it goes. I really like the fourth copy, but oh well. Now let's circle back to Adawara Soaring City. So this card I didn't mention in the intro, it is the blue version of Beseju Who Endures. So Adawara Soaring City is obviously a legendary land. It has a channel for three and a blue. Discard this land from your hand, return target artifact, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker to its owner's hand. This ability, this ability sorry, I can't talk, costs one less to activate for each legendary creature you control. So how is this different? Well, it bounces creatures or planeswalkers as well, unlike Beseju, but it doesn't uh, target non-basic lands. So that means that we now have two main deck really, really playable answers to Narset, which is something that the Lotus Field deck has always struggled with. And I think that's just fantastic. Uh, you'll notice there's no copy of Blast Zone because in my opinion, we just don't need it anymore between having Beseju and Atawara. Uh, they have everything covered while helping fix our mana base up. So one less colorless land in the mana base is definitely a bonus for me. Um... And this card, honestly, is really overperformed. It's as good as Beseju, uh, at least in this deck. It has been phenomenal. I'm a really big fan. So another thing that I'm well known for when I play this deck, ooh, those hovers are acting up, okay, uh, is I like Brawl. I usually play three copies of Brawl on all my lists. I ended up shaving the third copy of Brawl last night for the fourth copy of Dig Through Time. Uh, I ended up going 3-2 in a league, and... It was a little frustrating that two of my losses, I was just sitting there trying to draw action over and over with multiple Brawls in my hand. Maybe I'm overreacting a little bit, but I've decided to shave down to two copies of Brawl and then add in the fourth copy of Dig Through Time. Uh, and then that, if we're playing Dig Through Time, strategic planning makes a lot of sense because it fuels our graveyard. A lot of you asked me to start recording with Otherworldly Gaze, and I'll bring that up for you. Uh, let's just search for it gaze so here it is otherworldly gaze so i've been playing this in my modern lurus lotus breach deck because it digs six cards deep for lotus field which is super powerful well one of the differences between modern and pioneer is that in modern we're just trying to assemble an abc combo in pioneer we're an engine deck which is a little bit different because while we are trying to assemble a plus b rc is a variety of different combo pieces that are very Storm-esque into winning. We're not looking for one specific card. We're looking to build or accumulate a lot of cards into Approach of the Second Sun. So it's really weird when you have Otherworldly Gaze that puts four of the pages on top of your deck, but you can't draw into it. So that's a real problem I see, because when you look at this deck, there's actually not that many draw spells. You have Vizier, or I guess you could count dig through time if you wanted, but like that's pretty much it if you're not running strategic planning and instead you're running otherworldly gaze. So I don't think gaze is actually appropriate here. I just want to call that out because people are really excited. They're like, wow, I can't believe it digs for Lotus. It fuels dig through time. You can use it with Leer. I'm not playing Leer today. I did test a Leer, and ultimately I think Leer is just worse than running Pure into the Abyss. Um, it was really powerful in the straight blue green version. But I think if you're playing for keeps, you probably just want to be running Pure into the Abyss. One of the reasons I am not running the Ultimatum build is, and it comes up all the time, especially in our Discord, and if you're not a part of our Discord, feel free to join it, is the cost difference between Pure into the Abyss and Emergent Ultimatum. And if you're uh, playing an Ultimatum build, you have to run, you know, there's a, a whole package of cards that you can play at this point. So there's usually Omniscience, there's... Um, what is it called? The card where you discard your hand and Demonic Tutor for three cards, and then Dark Petitions, and all these other things that you have to run in order to support this really clunky package that's just terrible versus Mystic Dispute. Uh, and I don't want to be playing cards that are bad against just Mystical Dispute. It doesn't make sense to do so. And I think something that really, like, it irritates me after playing a lot, but it's admittedly not super obvious if you're not someone that plays this deck a lot, which is Ultimatum costs seven. But it's so difficult to cast for seven mana because you need triple of one color and then two of two different colors. So the mana just never aligns. So you need like pour over the pages and viziers to fix your mana before you even get to that point. And usually you're just trying to cast peer into the abyss off it anyway. You should just be playing peer. I think the ultimatum package is just a trap. 
like you have to play so many bad cards to support it and right now the biggest argument for it is that it's good against narset because you have this pile that beats narset well they just gave us two lands that we can play on our main deck then answer narset that we can tutor for with sylvan scrying come on like you don't need to play that package anymore you don't have to run these clunky cards that are just terrible we can play good cards in our deck again so I, I do think that this is the build you want to be playing. I don't think you want to be playing the ultimatum package. Um, and then that means that you can play Dig Through Time again because that build had to cut Dig Through Time to support things like Dark Petition. And Dig Through Time is just so powerful. It's also good against Narset. So that's my two cents. Uh, take it or leave it. You don't have to agree with my deck building. That's fine. One thing I am taking from the Emergent Ultimatum build is I am only playing two Wishes, which might seem a little bit uncommon at this point, uh, because most people are used to running more. I mean, I was running four Wish in my build, and now I'm running one Fave Wishes and one Masterminds Acquisition. So I'm down on them. Well, not down on them, but lower numbers. Uh, and I've honestly, I've enjoyed it. So I, I always hated ending up with too many Fave Wishes in your handmaid combo, because it is kind of a clunky card. It costs four mana for granted. So I am liking one of each. I think if you wanted to, if I mean, you don't have to do this, but if you really, really wanted to, you could run like one Fey or one Masterminds and then one copy of Actual Wish and then don't run Approach. You could run like a niv Mizzet or something if you ran Wish and Masterminds. Because I really don't like Approach. In fact, I think it's like kind of a bad win condition because it's 14 mana and you have to find it a second time on the same turn. Like, it's just terrible. Um... I do really like niv Mizzet, but today we're going to play Approach. Uh, Mystical Dispute obviously is a great card. March of Swirling Mists. So this card, honestly, I haven't seen this in any other list yet, but it was a light bulb moment for me last night when I was playing. I haven't actually got to play it yet because I played it in the last, or I thought of it in my last league. But March of Swirling Mist. So this is a callback to the Shoal Cycle from the original Kamigawa set. So it's X and a blue if you're unfamiliar. For an instant, as an additional cost to play this spell, you may exile any number of blue cards from your hand. Each blue card you uh, remove this way, the spell costs two generic mana less to cast. And then up to X target creatures phase out. <coughs> Excuse me. So what this means is on those critical combo turns where previously we were playing Stern Dismissal, you can... Uh, Vespian stage your Lotus Field floating in blue mana. Cast March, pitching a spare strategic planning or dig through timer, whatever, and then phase out Winota plus Archon of Emeria or a slew of other things. So I think it's really powerful, but not only that, you can hit double Eidolon of the Great Rebel. Uh, it hits two things, which is just remarkable. Uh, it's so, so, so good. And that's why you'll, you'll notice I'm not playing a single copy of Anger of the Gods. I don't think we need it anymore. I really don't. Um, one thing I waffled back and forth on a lot was, do you want to play one Anger in the sideboard for a Fey or Masterminds target? And I think the answer is no. With only two Wishes in your deck, you don't want a really big Wish board because it's just wasted sideboards. So instead, I'm playing a really lean and efficient sideboard where I'm not playing a bunch of those cheeky wish targets because you only have two wishes anyway. You're better off just maximizing how often you'll actually use these cards. So I am not playing an anger today. Um, I am playing two thought distortion. I've noticed that the control decks have come back a little bit and I want one to board in and one to leave in the sideboard for these wish effects. You could even argue that you're supposed to just board in all five nowadays. I don't have the experience with thought distortion for that. So maybe today I'll try boarding in both if we get paired versus blue, I'm unsure. And then down here we have the wishable copy for um wishable copy of the sage for our two wishes i'm not even sure if this is correct because i like like i mentioned you only have two so i don't know how often you'll be wishing for an answer especially when you have four main deck answers plus four scrying but we'll see how it goes today and the last card is leyline of sanctity i saw this in other lists and i wanted to try it because it is so good against burn but also all those black decks with necromentia uh, go blank all that stuff so i'm interested in trying ley lane today uh, i have yet to play it but it's something that i think in theory makes a lot of sense i've been rambling for a while now so hopefully you enjoyed this deck tech if you did let me know if you hated it you know you watched it this long you can also leave a comment down below let me know what you didn't like about it perhaps just its length or maybe you hate my face i mean that's entirely possible too but thank you for watching this long let's head on over to match number one and uh, let's kick some butt today with Pioneer Lotus Combo. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for a Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Line, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for seven tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us. Just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to match number one. We are on the draw and we've opened up an interesting hand. We have Turbo Grazer into Triple Vizier. Um, I don't know if we're supposed to keep this. It feels sort of bad to mulligan it. I don't know. Opponent kept seven. No companion, so they're probably not an aggro deck. I'm just going to mulligan. I think you're supposed to ship that. And this hand's just so much better. I'm glad I mulled. All right, we're going to keep this and bottom the recovery. We could also... Actually, let's bottom the, the Sanctum. We We don't need five lands. This is fine. All right, Hall of the Storm Giants. Uh, scrying isn't really something we need here, but maybe a little counterspell it. So I wonder what they're playing. Could be a control deck, could be the new Paradoxical Outcome deck, who knows. Fire Bluff Canal. All right, so they're just the Phoenix deck. All right, so... I think I just want to go get... The Ottawara Soaring City, so that way I can bounce the thing in the ice. Or even a Narset. Start a course. Okay. Discards Lightning Axe. And Spire Bluff Canal. Bitter. Okay. So they're likely to be able to flip the thing in the ice on their next turn. They're at five cards. Draw. Hmm. I don't think there's a real difference here. So I'm going to play the Thespian stage. And the reason I mentioned I don't think there's a real difference is you could play Lotus Field right now. Float two mana. Whatever. You're not going to cycle the Vizier. That's wasted mana. But by playing the Thespian stage at this moment, I can cycle the Zagoth Triumph. And that has some value to me. I guess the downside is that I'm not able to play... Uh, Thespian stage next turn and just bounce with Ottawara. That said, my life total is at 20. They don't have any Phoenixes in the graveyard. So I don't know if I uh, like that play anyway. And they're just going to pass. Uh, my opponent conceded. Weird. Uh, I don't really know what just happened there. We're going to sideboard normally. Uh, I guess they had to run. That's a little disappointing of a start. Uh, I'm sorry, everyone. I can't control that. So we're 1-0. Uh, sorry. Like, I know it's not great for a video, but I can't control that. We're 1-0. We're just going to try to win the rest of the way. I'll see you in match number two.
If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. All right, match number two, we're on the draw, and this is an easy keep for me. We don't have access to Lotus, but, I mean, the rest of this hand is just so good that I think you're supposed to win. Steamens likely means the Phoenix deck again. Okay, Hidden Strings, decent draw. We just have to find the Lotus field. And we can bottom a temple. Pass the turn. All right, Spire Bluff Canal. Expressive Iteration. So they are not getting the full value. They are just using this as a bad telling time. Draw. All right, still no Lotus. Play Balgad and pass. There's no reason to play Thespian Stage because if I was to draw Lotus for my turn, I'd have to sacrifice Thespian Stage or wait. Um, so I don't think that's the best line, personally. And a second Expressive Iteration, Exile and Consider, and they can play Consider off the Expressive. Milden, is it Charm? Draw? Planning. Okay, that's a reasonable draw. Let's see if we can hit Lotus Field. The answer was no. Um, I think we just take the land. Play stage. Pass the turn. So it's an interesting decision there on whether or not you play the Sanctum or the stage. And I think that you're, you're supposed to play stage in case you draw Lotus Field for turn. Because then you're not being set back two turns. Well, if you play Sanctum now... It's slightly better if you don't draw the Lotus Field, but you don't really gain a whole lot by doing it. So I think it's a mistake to do so. Now another consider. Milling Niv Mizzet. Okay. I guess we also have a built-in answer to Niv Mizzet now, which is kind of draw. Razor. Okay, I'm gonna play the Sanctum and then let's get back the the strategic planning. Pass the turn. 46 cards in deck. We've seen quite a few at this point. We just have to find that copy of Lotus Field. Treasure Cruise. 10 cards in hand. All right. So they're now at 14, but that ultimately doesn't matter that much. There's Narset. We have the main deck answer with the Otawara, so I'm not actually too concerned with that draw. Dig through time. I can play the Ottawara, but then I don't have the answer. Uh, so I think we're supposed to just cast the planning here. There we go. Although, look at those mills. That hurts. Okay, and then trying to go get our Lotus Field. Like Those were two mills that I would not have liked to do. Like milling, hidden strings, and um, what is it called? Horror of the Pages. Not ideal. All right, we're at 20. Ah, oh, we got Days and Doing comboed. That hurt. Okay. Um, I didn't know that. Maybe it's just Blu-ray Control and it's not Phoenix. I, I haven't seen that in Phoenix before. If I had known that, I wouldn't have uh, obviously left myself dead to Days and Doing. Okay. There's the Miz. I'm just dead at this point. I'm not going to be able to beat this. Draw. Okay, we just have to pass the turn. So this might just be Blue Red Control and not uh, Phoenix. Iteration. I'm just playing it out at this point to get a little bit more information on what our opponent's doing. Uh, because that would be pretty helpful to me. I think I saw Lightning Axe, though. Like, this still could just be Phoenix with the Narset Days and Doing Package. Actually, I can bring up Goldfish. Um, we're under Pioneer. Let's look at this blue-red list. No main deck. Uh, Narset in the first list. No Days and Doing. 
Yeah, so this looks like this person's own thing. Here's Stefan Schultz list, Thing in the Ice, Phoenix. Yeah, so I think we're just losing to someone's personal list. Um, not a whole lot I can do about that. I don't think I was supposed to play around days in doing, so that's fine. Let's go back to Pioneer. Let's see if there's another like blue red deck. Two more. Doesn't look like it. So I think I just got got. Like that happens. I'm not too upset about that. Yeah, we're seeing like fiery impulse too. Like that may, may be because we saw one earlier off of the expressive iteration that was uh removed was the first card we saw removed. So maybe I was supposed to just know that this wasn't Phoenix. It's hard to say. Okay. Go to one. You couldn't kill me. You could only deal 19. Come on. Were you even trying? I guess we get to see seven of their cards being discarded here. And once again, no Phoenix. All right. So that's some good info. We drew the Ottawara. We have the answer to Nim, is it? Uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. So we lost game number one. Not the end of the world. Let's just move on to the post board games and try. So. I am interested in these thought distortions. I'm also interested in mystical dispute. So we have five cards coming in. We can easily board out Grazer here. And I think that you can also board out Brawl. Uh, we'll keep one for the combo turn, but it's not really a card we want um, because we, we saw how much removal our opponent had. So I think those are the five cards that we can board out here. I don't think we want March, even though they are a Niv-Mizzet deck. We have two Soaring Cities for those. We'll be fine. That submit button. All right. On the play for game number two. We have Lotus Field and we have a couple Soaring Cities. Let's keep. Ideally, I would draw a land on turn two. So that way I don't have to play the Ottawaras. Because I would like to keep those back. I don't want to have to play them. Although there is a silver lining. So a trick you can do is if you plan on using these later is we didn't draw a land. Um, if you plan on using them later, you can sacrifice them to Lotus Field and then battle get them back. We don't need a peer. Another Lotus Field is honestly a little bit awkward. Um, I don't know what to do. Maybe the best card here is just battle get recovery. All right, pass the turn. Island. Draw. Let's cast a, uh, another plant. Disputed. All right, let's play Lotus Field. And pass the turn. All right, so not Narsa. I do like that. Picking up an island. Draw. Four of the pages. Pretty good. Let's cycle Vizier. See what we can do here. All right. Untap land. Another Lotus Field. So now we're stuck in a weird spot where um, I'm going to play the Ottawara, which means that we don't have any answers to Narset, but I can always Balagad back the other Ottawara. And another dispute. Okay. So one of the benefits of playing Ottawara there is that means the next turn I can play Balagad and the turn after that I would have double dispute. And now they slam the Narset. So if they have the Days Undoing, I'm going to get really put punished. Draw. All right. Uh, I'm going to Balagad back the Ottawara. And hope that they respect Mystical Dispute here and don't Days Undoing me. All right, Narset. Test of Talents. They have double Test of Talents in hand. All right? Discarded Crackling Drake. Well, if they didn't have Days in Doing there, they probably don't have it now. Sacrifice these and pass the turn. So I cannot activate the Ottawara right now. So if they catch us, I mean, they're going to win. Uh, I can't do a whole lot about that. Iteration. Revealed Island. And it looks like they're just passing. 
I have to discard a card. Created a test of talent, so they still have one test in their hand. And I'm just going to pass here. Opt, okay. They put a card on the bottom with the opt. Opt again. Okay, so they have three open mana, treasure. I'm going to let that go. Now they have four open mana, so they have a whole lot going on. I think I'm actually just going to let them just pass. Like, discard two cards. Discard and niv it. And another treasure cruise, okay. Sage, what's up? So much mana. That's actually a really good draw. Alright, I'm going to respond to that. Um, let's cycle Vizier. Draw. That finds us the other... Oh, no, it doesn't. The other Ottawa is in our... Um, so I should not remove that. Vizier planning. Hmm. I wonder if I can also just beat niv -Miz it. Hidden strings. Only, yeah, I like... Am I going to cast 20 spells? Like, how often do we think that's going to be relevant? So, I think I'm just going to copy here. I'm unsure. Maybe I'm supposed to just bounce the Narset. Yeah, it's probably just bounce Narset. Like, having three Lotus next turn just means that I have to spend one additional mana. Bounce the Narset. And now we have our window. I think I can win this without dying to Miniv Mizzet. Alright, so... Let's get in string. Cancel. All right, so hidden strings, untap these two. Auto yield. All right, auto yield. Okay. Yes, yes, no. All right, and then four over pages. So this is going to make one mana. All right, they're just going to use their dispute now, which is fine. Yes. Okay. Untap our two copies of Lotus Field. We can discard the scrying, I guess. Like I don't think we're actually going to do that. Um, let's pour again. Tap, discard, cycle. But honestly, like finding Balagad and just like getting back Atawara wouldn't be bad either. Uh, you don't. I guess I could masterminds for the march. I don't know if that's any good, but it's something I could do. That'd be a five mana line. Then I'd have seven open mana. I think I'm going to wait. I don't know if I need to make that play quite yet. Let's pour. Okay. I also like don't necessarily need to answer the visit. Like we have plenty of life. Play the, the land. Dig through time. Uh, so I have seven, six mana, 13 mana. So I could masterminds into approach. But then I don't have enough mana. I'm just going to dig. Let's pop that graveyard out. Exile land, vizier, scrying, scrying, balagad. Strategic planning. 14 life. Hidden strings is great. Let's take vizier too. I don't think we need another dig through time. And I could take the Balagad to get back Atawara. I just don't think we're going to need to do that. All right, float. And then cycle Vizier. So this makes up for one of the mana that the Dig Through Time cast was used to cast at least. And then um, 
We might have enough now, I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna add some black. Hidden strings, and we'll use one black here. All right, so we have nine mana floating. Seven mana in play. So that's 16 mana. Masterminds would be 12 mana. Approach would leave me with five mana floating and a dig. Hmm. So alternatively, I could masterminds for the march and then peer. How many hidden strings do I have? If there's two hidden strings left in the deck, and the peer would be for 12 cards, which isn't even that many. Um, I don't know if I love the peer line. I think I'm just going to dig. Is your. You can remove one of the Ottawaras, Pier, Poor, Dig Through Time, Poor. All right. And Hidden Strings is good, and so is Brawl. All right, so I think we've got it now. Play Brawl. And then Hidden Strings. Okay, yes, yes, no. Masterminds. Go get approach. Add some white mana. Let's cast the approach. All right, so now we have 24 cards index, so we draw 12. We only have one hidden strings left. So if I cast double planning, I'm not guaranteed to hit the the approach. Or I can cast here with two available mana with only one hidden strings in the deck. But if I hit the strings, I'm guaranteed to win. I think I'm going to peer. And I'm going to float a blue because I need the hidden strings to win anyway, so I don't need to float white in this way. I can uh, keep open planning into strings. And I hit the hidden string. So easy win. Uh, don't have to sweat it. Okay. Yes. Yes. No. And then cast approach. All right. We did it. That is game. And they never saw our thought to sort. Okay, I'm just going to resubmit. Ottawa is really good. Double Lotus Field, one land Balagad. This is a little awkward. Already a mulligan to six where I have to hit the second lane. I'm going to try to be disciplined and just mulligan it. This is okay. Uh, so we'll keep this and bottom the Vizier. You need to find Lotus Field, but this hand's pretty good. Ding. Uh, I think we'll keep dig through time. If I could dig through time. No, we're not going to do that. Sorry. Uh, opt. I'm just going to play the Triome here because that way I can hold open Mystical Dispute for Narset. Looks like they might have missed land number two. Iteration. Not going to counter that. Okay. Draw. Another thought to sort. All right, I'm going to play conservatively and just never let Nurse it resolve. <laughs> I think that's the plan here. All right, and they're just passing. So now I wonder if I give them the window with Lotus Field. I think the answer is yes, and just hope that they don't have it. All right, pass the turn. If they play Narset, we have the Atawara. We can set up a turn that we bounce the Narset into Thought Distortion. All right, land number five. What cost double red? 
change of heart, they are deciding to pass the turn. Draw. Right, so I think we just tried to distort their thoughts. Ugh. Okay, opt. Um, do they get the one from my hand? I don't know. I guess they do. They still get the exile the other one. Okay, so they removed a card from my hand. Kudos. Uh, and they have Crackling Drake, Spire Bluff, Canal left. I can counter the Drake if I play the Atawara. You're just going to jam it right into my Mystical Dispute that you know about? Come on. They have one unknown in hand. And we get to maybe try to win the game with this dig through time. All right. Strategic planning. Hello, Pierre. Welcome to this bis. All right, dig through, or no, I'm sorry, not dig through time. Hidden strings. I just really want to dig through time. And now you've all heard my terrible singing voice. I hope you're happy. Um, turn to the abyss. Okay, cycle vizier. Untap, draw. Uh, my opponent's salting off in chat. Apparently my draw was too good. I don't think so, but hey, we're too all. Well. We've defeated this weird blue-red control deck with Narset Days and Doing. Cool. Uh, I will see you in match number three. Playing your favorite combo deck in paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for Grape Shot, everyone's favorite storm wind condition. A Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator, 4 treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has Slime Time Live! Eve Progenitor Ooze Tokens with the Power Toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice. We've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing Modern. And then Squirrels vs. Goblins, Chatterstorm vs. Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel Tokens and 20 Goblin Tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. Okay, we're back at it again. The third match. Let's see if we can uh, win another one. What are said the Dream Den? Well, that means they're likely on an aggro deck, and this hand doesn't really do the whole Lotus thing, so we're going to ship it. This is not bad. Uh, I definitely like this hand. I think you're actually supposed to bottom the poor, which seems a little bit odd, but we're looking to create the combo of Lotus Field, Stage, Hidden Strings, Cast Pier, win the game. Uh, poor is really good, but we need to find a land that we don't have to sacrifice. So I think we're supposed to keep the strategic planning. Keep. Okay, Soaring City passed the turn. Okay, so they're, they're likely the, uh, what is it called? Unsoul Artifact deck. Do we have to worry about Stubborn Denial? Mythopter, okay. And they're playing another drum. Okay, so they have four cards in hand. Draw. The Seiju who endures. Um, it's technically another land. I'd really like to hold that one, though. All right, so I think I'm going to play stage here and cast the planning. I want to hold this for killing Ornithopter, but I did not hit a land. Uh, awkward. I think I'm going to... Take the Vizier here. Really hoping I draw into an untapped green source. I would like to hold back the Besager. I really don't want to have to play it. It'll be interesting to see what our uh, draw step tells us to do on the following turn. Because if it's not good, I can play the Besager into Vizier. Uh, and that allows us a little bit of extra mana on the combo turn. 
but I would like to be able to hold up a Seiju to kill a giant creature. But maybe that's just not what's important. Uh, the thing about killing a giant creature that would be really nice is that it shuts off uh, Stubborn Denial from countering Turn to the Abyss. And Ginger Brute. Okay, they have three cards in hand. Okay, we're falling to 19. Draw. D roll. Hmm. Okay, so I think that changes things a little bit. I'm going to play the Beseju and then play Brawl. So we could theoretically try to win on our turn. I say theoretically because I'm not sure if it's the best choice, but uh, so we'll have the Lotus Field stage combo plus Vizier next turn. So we can actually cast Pyrrha into the Abyss. The quick math from the top of my head says that we wouldn't have any floating mana. Um, but I could be wrong. Plus, we could always draw another Vizier or a Hidden Strings for a turn or off the Vizier itself. Ooh. Portable Hole, that stinks. Alright, so Brawl is going to get murdered. Goodbye, Brawl. Select into a Portable Hole. When it still has three cards in hand. So if they have an Insult Artifact, they can tap the drums, tapping Ornithopter and Ginger Brute, and put the Insult on the Patchwork Automaton and swing for 8, which would put me to 11. Black Staff, and that does make the uh, Automaton larger. It's kind of crazy because they're doing all of this off a single land. It's wild. Okay, one blue mana. What's going on here? Stone Coil. And now they have one card in hand. So they'll swing for five, which puts me to 14. I am uh, within the realm of possibly dead next turn. Draw. Age. Um, so I think we're supposed to play Lotus Field. All right, so let's do some quick math. So they can make a creature into a 4-4. Four, four. So they can turn Ornithopter into a 4. That's 10 damage. 11 damage. That's 3. So if they play an artifact spell, I would go to 2. If they have um, an insult artifact, I'm dead. I think I'm supposed to cycle Vizier. Hope that I hit another Hidden Strings. Draw. Razor. So at least I have a blocker now. That's good. All right. Copy. Play Grazer. Stage on the battlefield. Pass the turn. So I'm very dead to stubborn denial. Not a whole lot I can do about that. I guess the activating black staff also assumes that uh, our opponent has something to tap with the springy leaf drum that wasn't something i was considering they're casting something what was it and solar artifact okay so that means that they're tapping out uh so they will not have stubborn denial up which means that we should be able to win on our turn and i'm just going to throw this grazer right underneath the bus it's mushed okay i'm at seven Draw. Dig through time. Hidden strings and tap our lotus fields. Yes, yes, no. Tap for some blue mana. And peer into this bis. Four mana floating. All right, let's cycle Vizier. And tap lotus field. Draw three hidden strings in there. That's pretty good. Let's play Brawl. This should be pretty. Strings. Yes, yes, no. Strings. Yes, yes, no. Okay. Hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. 
And the keyboard shortcut for that is 334, by the way, if you're playing Magic Online. It just helps you speed your process up a little bit. Let's see if I have a Fae or a Masterminds yet. I don't. Okay, so I guess we can just draw 11 more cards. Here. I'm at one life. And there's a Fae. All right, Cycle Vizier. Okay. Granted. Yes. Get the approach. Cast approach. Okay, and I have four mana floating, which means that I can play the poor, or not poor. Yeah, it is poor. I can't talk. Uh, untap our lands. Discard scrying. I'm sure we have another poor in here. Cycle Vizier. That's actually fine because that is card number seven for the poor that I will eventually find in my hand. There it is. Okay. Well, when you have so many cards in your hand, it's easy to get uh, lose track of them. You know how it is. Uh, discard a land. Play land. And win the game. Approach of the second sun. Roughly infinite mana to win, but we did it. All right, so that's game number one over the Insult Artifact deck. So I do like bringing in the extra copy of Beseju here. I've gone back and forth on whether or not Mystical Dispute is a card you want because it's interesting. Um, in my opinion, it's good because it stops Insult Artifact, which, yeah, like, I don't know how important that is, but it stops Stubborn Denial, and that's something I, I think does have a lot of value. But the question is, what do you board out for these four cards? Because everything's pretty good here. So I think you have to make some concessions if you want to board in Mystical Dispute. I think that you board out one copy of Brawl, because as you saw, they're a portable hold deck. It's likely to get exiled anyway. And then you need three more slots. So you can board out one dig and one peer, uh, but it does create games where maybe you don't draw into uh, action spells, which is how I lost in those practice games. So. I'm a little bit nervous about that. You could also board out a land because you're boarding in a land. I, I do think that's something we're allowed to do here. Um, so you can probably board out the Triome because it's not like they're a Besaju deck anyway. So I think that this is probably the worst land in this matchup. And then you need two slots. So you can board out one dig, one peer. You could also board out one of the wishes, but I don't know how I feel about that. You need a way to win the game eventually. So I think we'll try one dig one piece. And I hope that I just have better RNG than I did yesterday. All right, game number two, our opponent has revealed Lurus of the Dream Den again. And here we have, you know, Lotus Fields, Thespian Sage. I do, I'd like to draw a green source. That would be our best draw. I think we are supposed to keep this and just hope that we hit our average draw of drawing a green source. Like, I would take a Besaju here to accelerate this game plan. Hallowed Fountain. Black Staff, okay. If they have an Ornithopter, they can theoretically start swinging for four on turn two. There it is. All right, Doc, give me that green source. Womp, womp. All right, so... Silver Lining, if we have to play Thespian Stage on turn two and sacrifice it on turn three, on turn four, we can scrying for another copy of Stage. Obviously, I don't want to do that, but it's something we could theoretically do. We do have another window here of hitting a green source, because if I draw a green source that's untapped, I can play Grazer into Lotus Field and then copy on the following turn. And it looks like they're just going to convert their Ornithopter into a 4 Yep. Heat down Thopter. 16 life. And another Thopter. Okay. There we have three cards in hand. Green source. There we go. Play it. Grazer. It's like drawing a time lock. It really was. Green source is just so broken. Okay. And now we pass. 
opponent has four cards in hand. I'm always just so worried about Severn Denial in this matchup. And they're just going to attack with their Thopter. I am getting Thopted. I'll take it. I'm just going to go to 12 here. You could argue that maybe I'm supposed to block because of Portable Hole, but I feel like when they do this, it's usually a trick because they want to make their creature larger and they want you to block it before it's larger. Three cards in hand now. What's going on here? Don't coil serpent. Okay. Two cards in hand. And they're representing stubborn denial. I think we just copy. Pass that turn. Okay. Opponent drawing up to three cards. It was Fire Blade, okay. So they can put that on the Stone Coil, and then they're representing eight damage. They still have Stubborn Denial available, which is a giant pain in the buns. We're going to block the, uh, the Serpent here. So I'll take five going to seven. Draw. That was really good. Okay, so we're going to play Brawl here. And I'm going to try to trick them. And tap their uh, Confluence. They could Stubborn Denial the Hidden Strings right now. But we got really lucky and drew another Strings, which means I can untap our Lotus Field. And then pour over Pages. It looks like they're going to stub our Hidden Strings. Okay, that's fine. And now we hit in strings again. Yes, yes, no. Okay, blue, green. I'm gonna pour. Ah, oh, that was disappointing. Okay, so play scrying. I guess I could have disputed my own scrying there in order to loot. Maybe that's better than what I was thinking. Yeah, that was that probably would have been a better play. I don't know. I guess this way I can keep up dispute for another possible um I don't know what it's called. Stubborn denial. A little disappointing that our pour was just all blanks, but we did cut uh, two action spells from our deck. We shaved a peer and a dig. Not that any of the cards we drew would have been that because they weren't cyborg cards, so it didn't really matter. Okay. Two cards in hand. Cannot block. Well, I guess I could block, but I'm not going to. Um. I am going to use the Ottawara to, ooh, I forget, it only costs three here, uh, to bounce the Stone Coil. We have a legendary creature, so it costs one less mana. And I will take four going down to three. So they played Mutavolt, so they have Patchwork Automaton. So I think I'm supposed to leak this. Like, they're going to play the Stone Coil anyway, but this just guarantees that I can get my Mystical this future. Because I want, so by Mystical Dispute Trigger, I mean we have a Brawl. So I am allowed to loot here with the Brawl. Okay, yes. Ding. And then they can play their Stone Coil. And now pour over the pages. I am asking you. No, I am telling you to not draw garbage this time. I would really appreciate that. So one of the big things here is we kept our life total at three, which means that Peer into the Abyss is still live. All right, draw for turn, planning. Um, what's planning? So the reason I want to start on planning, well, that would have stunk, is that if the for some reason the strategic planning is all bad cards, you have a bad card to discard to pour over the pages. Draw. 
Okay, okay. So, I mean, it's technically a card. It doesn't do a whole lot right now, but maybe it will in a second. So, with Brawl in play, this board with pages, instead of making one mana, makes two. And I, 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 um, I think we discard the temple. Like, I don't, I think mana is a choke point this turn, and I'm not going to have the luxury of using that. So, we have two mana floating. I can play granted into pier floating one how many hidden strings have we used one two we have two hidden strings in our deck um we just have to hit one of the hidden string grab the pier black blue all right deck please give me hidden strings ding good deal Yes, yes, no. Okay. Looking for other cards. Uh, we did not hit another Hidden Strings or a Poor. We do have Balagad Recovery, though, so that's pretty good. So we're going to Balagad here, returning Poor pages. And what's really nice about this, and this is one of the reasons I love Balagad, and I talked about it in the intro, is when you have Baral, this is just a completely free uh, Poor over the pages because you're it's two mana to cast uh, Balagad, and then pour over the pages makes two mana. All right, we have 15 cards left in deck. We had another pour. Okay, let's cast it. Tap, 12 cards in deck. We do have the masterminds to go get approach. I just don't think we're there mana yet, mana wise yet. All right, so we're going to mill. I'm sorry, not mill. Uh, Cycle and untap. Draw. And there's hidden strings. That might actually do it. So strings. This is the last one. There are no more copies of hidden strings in our dock. All right, so we have eight mana. Let's play the acquisition. Good approach. I'm just trying to check something first. If I have a Balagad in here, we don't have Balagad. Uh, I'm going to planning. So I want a Balagad because it makes mana, but we have another pour. All right, that's good. So let's add white here. You can use one white. This brings us down to five cards. Discard drawing, I guess. And there's a Balagad. Okay, so we're going to cast Approach. And then Balagad, get back Hidden Strings. Like, this actually would have been a lot easier had I drawn more Balagads, which is always why I'm so nervous about cutting them. Uh, I'm sure, like, we're doing fine. We're about to be 3-0. But 4 Balagad just makes me feel more comfortable, but maybe 3 is just the right number. We have 6 cards in deck. Uh, we can just dig for the win. Okay, doesn't really matter what we target. Okay, we'll take the approach in Balagad. All right, and then, whoops, I have to do one of these for white, my bad. And cast the approach. We want to leave at least one blue mana floating. We have a mystical dispute. We're not going to need to cast it, but if we did, I don't know, we could. All right, and we are three. Oh, two rounds left to go. This deck is good. Let's see if I can win the last two. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a card hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your card hoarder cart to make life simple for you. All right, we're on the draw. We're going to keep this. We need to draw another land, but this hand is pretty good. One thing that we can do is on turn two, play Fave Wishes as a attacking creature so that way we can cipher hidden strings onto it. Okay, Brawl. I do like Brawl. Okay. 
Draw for turn. Ding. That land was very good. All right, so we're going to play the Brawl here instead of the Fave Wishes. Brawl can accomplish the same thing regarding Cypher. Does the Brawl resolve? Does. So no main deck copy Mystical Dispute. They milled an island. All right, Castle, you got it. And I've been hold. Draw. Okay, so Vizier was secretly a pretty good draw here because if for some reason, I mean, I doubt it would ever happen. But let's say our opponent taps out for something we don't care about. We can then next turn play our stage, cycle Vizier to untap Lotus Field, copy our stage with Lotus Field, and then hidden strings into pour over the page. It's exactly enough mana to do that. But they would have to tap out for something we don't care about, which is pretty unlikely, but it's possible. All right, second castle. Draw. Uh, actually, I think I should just, I'm gonna copy on their upkeep, but we don't wanna uh, wait until their end step because if they play a, what is it called? Um, Guild of Ruin, it gets a little dicey. We don't want that to happen. And by doing it on their upkeep, if they have something like Disallow, you don't get punished. Five mana. Big Tough. Big Tough. Okay. So this is a window for us. They, they'll only have one counter spell up, and we might be able to beat that. Okay. Draw. So... Let's cycle Vizier to start. Okay, draw. Balagad. All right, so what I'm going to do here is use the alternate mode on Hidden Strings to tap down our opponent. They'll probably float mana or something, and then we can switch phases. Yes, yes, no. Okay, so they didn't make us do that, and now we can just play poor. Right, so actually cancel. Cancel. Um I can destroy the portable hole and get back my brawl. They don't have missing just it's fine. I mean I'm gonna look so dumb if I get punished by this, but I think it's actually the correct play. So the reason it's the correct play is that I can then Balagad back the poor. And like, what are the odds they have main deck mystical? This Come on. All right. Untap, discard. Now we Balagad, get back the poor. I just want to draw cards. Okay, poor. That wasn't that good. Um, third land i guess we've already played a land so it doesn't really matter cycle okay we have seven total mana right now all right belgad back the poor we could also get back hidden strings but i'd rather just draw a card uh i don't want the digs to fail and just end up with a bunch of floating mana Yikes. Okay. Um, discard another land. And let's dig. Okay. So seeing seven cards here. Triple hidden string. So I believe we have enough mana now to string strings fey peer. The downside of this line is that we know that the blast hidden strings is on the bottom of our deck. Um, so I could shuffle with uh, the scrying in the middle. That might actually just be the play. So let's hidden strings. Okay. Hidden strings again. A lot of mana. Yes, yes, no. And now we fave of wishes. I want to keep that green mana floating because I want to shuffle the deck. 
Yes. Actually, um, no, I don't have enough mana. I was like, do I have enough mana to just approach, dig approach, and I don't. The approach one is just like so much mana to win. Right, so let's shuffle our deck. Honestly, I might not have enough mana uh, after. Because I only have one hidden strings left, and that's not going to be enough to make 14 mana. Especially with one Balagad. So I might actually have to pass the turn. Grab Odawara. Target ourselves. And we have six available mana right now. Cycle Vizier. Untap. Another pour, okay. 16 cards left in deck. We can probably make this work. Untap. Discard a land. All right, let's pour. This brings us down to 10 cards in deck. Tap. Discard a land. All right, there's another pour over there. This brings us down to 7 cards in deck. Okay. Did not hit the hidden strings quite yet, but that's fine. Let's cycle six cards in deck. Draw. Uh, have I found the masterminds yet? That's a pour. There's the mastermind. Okay. So let's go get the approach. Cat for green. We did find the last Balagad recovery. So let's cast the Balagad. Returning Hidden Strings. So that's going to come back. All right, Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. Cat for white. All right, so gonna cost six we have four i think i'm actually short do i have to pass the turn here i think i do unless there's like a grazer or an unaccounted pour in, or not a grazer uh, a vizier or an uncounted pour in the deck i think i'm one mana short and wait there's another hidden strings how is that possible um am i playing five hidden strings i thought i counted all of them or maybe that first when i was looking at three maybe i thought i had already used one i guess i messed this game up uh and it ended up working out i don't know because i definitely wouldn't have scrined had i thought that there was two hidden strings left okay so we've won game number one just waiting for our opponent to let the approach resolve cool good deal we have won game, the first game now we move to sideboarding let's bring in those disputes and thought distortion get rid of these grazers i think you can board out one brawl there's some question on whether or not you want to side in beside you i don't think you do um like, what are they going to... I guess they could have like something like Deafening Silence, but it's pretty uncommon, I feel like. Let's look at the deck list. So here's like a standard Azorius Control deck. One Deafening Silence, Rest in Peace, is pretty good against me. Um, maybe I board it in just for like the Deafening Silence. Board out Triome, maybe? Or like Bark Channel? Out of Bark Channel. I think I want to leave the Triome. Okay. Game number two. Good hand. Keep. Opponent is mulligan to five at this. Point. And they've kept five. Island. Dispute. What a lovely draw. Glacial Fortress. So the question is, am I supposed to jam my scrying into their open mana? And now that answer is no. Three mana. No Narset. Okay. 
draw. So I'm going to play a little bit cautiously here. And I'm going to cycle Vizier to untap. Draw. Okay, so the question is next turn, do I tap for scrying? And I think yes. We can also double scrying next turn, but that leaves us a little bit open to our set. And they're going to pass the turn. Four cards in hand. Draw. So I think I'm going to play Scrying. If they want to counter this, have at it. Three mana. Am I being absorbed? I am. Okay. So now we play the Sanctum. Scrying number two. We turned a dead card into a live card with this interact. Now we go get Stage. Like I said, the downside of this play is that we did give our opponent a window to play Narset. Uh, that said, they were getting to the point in the game where next turn, if they go land Narset, they have two mana open. They can counter my Mystical Dispute anyway. So I think that this is a good window to tap out, do your thing, because they have to have Narset here. And if they don't, they only have four cards. Uh, we're really far ahead. All right, so Hollowed Fountain coming into play. It looks like untapped. Rest in peace. With our current configuration, that doesn't matter that much. Draw. Like it. We're just going to copy. I could play the planning here. I don't think I'm going to. I think the current goal is just don't lose to our opponent resolving things that matter. So I would counter a big Teferi if they played it here. I would also counter a Narset. Four mana, five mana. To buy a big Tef. And now we can resolve Pure on our turn. Draw. Let's play the Bard Channel. So the first step is, this is only 8 mana. You need 9 mana to win with here. So we're going to create that ninth mana using Pour of the Pages. Discard a stage, that's fine. And it's better to immediately cast the peer because you draw more cards if you cast another pour or a cycle you're just losing out on equity all right so we're gonna cycle with this vizier draw there's a brawl in there but is there a hidden string that's what i need wow we did not draw any copies of hidden string okay cycle vizier 20 cards left in deck draw Another Vizier, okay. Cycle. 18 cards left in deck. Still no hidden strings. Am I just blind? I want to make sure I'm not messing it. No, there's no hidden strings. In so we'll cast Pour. And tap. And you don't want to cast a bunch of Pours because you, we want to play Baralfur. And there's a bunch of hidden strings. Okay. So play the Baral. And we won't need to use Balagid this game because we have a bunch of leftover hidden strings from before. Right? Hidden strings again. Yes, yes, no. And do we have a wish effect already? We do. All right, so let's use that wish effect. Go get the approach. So this goes up to 11. And I need four to cast the pour. So this should just be an easy one for me. All right. And then pour pages. Untap. Discard a land. 13 cards left in deck. Four. And now our next card is going to be the approach. Discard. Okay. Tap for mana. Hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. Uh, I guess we play strategic planning and just don't misclick. Okay, and then approach. And just like that, we are 4-0. Boom. Love it. One round left to go. Will we become a trophy champion? Stick around and find out.
If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. It's the final match for the trophy. Can we get it? We're on the draw. This hand's fine. We don't have Lotus Field, but we do have the strategic planning to help find it. All right. I do like my matchup against Basic Island. Uh, let's play Balagad Recovery. So I think uh, a downside of this video, I mean, we're, you know, doing okay. Obviously, we're 4 0, but we will not get to play. Oh, they're on Spirits, the Marches or the uh, Ley Line. So Spirits is traditionally a tough matchup, um, but we're going to see what we can do. Play planning, finding Lotus. Finding Scrying. Uh, pass the turn. Selfless Spirit, okay. So we will get to resolve our Scrying, but they're bringing the beat down. Taking four this turn down to 16. Draw. Hidden Strings was a good one. All right, Scrying. Lotus field, play the field, and pass the turn. So they're attacking for at least five. They could be representing lethal next turn. Another selfless spirit, okay. So swinging in for six, it'll put me to ten. Okay, draw. And I think I'm just going to play stage and pass. So it might seem a little weird that I wouldn't try to go for it here because we do have double Vizier hidden strings. This is the real value behind having Ottawara in our deck. I don't have to make that decision right now. I can see if they try to put lethal on the board, and if they don't, I can just untap and try to beat their spell queller. I'm at three. And I, I don't think spell queller is going to be difficult to beat if I'm being honest. The question is, do they have Spell Queller or do they have, and I never remember the name of this card, so I'm sorry, but the two mana counter target spell unless its controller pays four, or if you have a creature with flying, it's just counter target spell, I believe. Um, I never remember the name of it. I'm sure somebody here watching will say it in the comments, but I just don't remember. Phase good. Let's cycle another Vizier. Okay. Four. Right, so that's decent. Let's cast Hidden Strings. Pretty good uh, spell caller target if they want it. And they are not callering. They might just have that counter spell that I mentioned. I wonder if I should just go get Dispute here with my Fae. It's like five mana, so I don't know if I really want to make that play, but perhaps it's best. And if it's Queller, I already have the answer with Oqua or Otara. But if it's not Queller, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Maybe I just dig. See if I can find a Brawl. Oh, there's a Brawl in our graveyard. So it's pretty unlikely. Going through time. And if there is the hard counter, they waste it on dig. That's a win in my book. All right, so this is pretty good. So I think now we do play the Fae. And it is Queller. Okay, so honestly, that's fine by me. Uh, this is actually best case scenario, believe it or not. And then I know that you're going to say no. But so now I don't have to play around that draw spell anymore. Or not draw spell, uh, counter spell anymore. And I later on, I can use Ottawara to bounce the Queller, and that will just put Granted on the stack. So it's not even like I have to do anything else. So I have three available mana here. Is four mana for poor better? We have two hidden strings in our deck. I'm just going to cast poor. Or pure, I mean. So this puts me to one life. All right, and we hit Hidden Strings. How lovely. 
cycle, untap a Lotus Field. And our opponent is conceded, so we're up a game over Spirits. I don't think you want to board in March. Uh, I really don't. You could board in uh, March over the Arboreal Grazer. I just don't think that's what the matchup is about. I'm going to side in Mystical Dispute. I do think those are cards we want here. Um, let's see if I can find Spirits on this sheet. I don't know if it's a deck that shows up in Goldfish, if I'm being honest. I'm not trying to BM anyone. It's just I don't know. Angel's Company is definitely not it. So let's try buying decks using Spell Queller. Search. Uh, Pioneer League Azoria Spirits. Why don't I just click on that? Deafening Silence, Rest in Peace. Do I probably want to board in the... Yeah, they all have like a bunch of Deafening Silence. Okay, so I'm going to board in Besage You. Probably take out this Triome. I think Triome is a little bit slow in this matchup. And now I have a minute and a half to figure out how I'm boarding it in these disputes. I do think we want to leave in both copies of Brawl. I think you can shape a dig. And then I wonder about like if you board out one of the wishes, like you just have one card to win the game. Um, I think you do board down to two peer. Is it crazy to do this? It looks pretty good to me. All right, let's try it out. Game two. This is a good hand. Keep. Basic planes, deafening silence. You son of a gun. Okay, draw. Temple. I don't think we want the fake quite yet. We're going to bottom that. We have the Ottawara already for the deafening silence. We just have to find a good window to do everything. They're just going to pass. Do I want to play the Brawl here? I think the answer is yes. All right, Brawl's on the stack. Sure, you've rattled my chains. So next turn, I can play Lotus plus Scrying. Definitely Silence is definitely annoying, but these sort of effects are so much easier now with these channel lands. We drew Besaju, which is just insane. Um, let's play the Scrying. This is a pretty good Spellcaller target. And they chose not. I almost want to. I guess I can wait. I, I was saying I almost want to besage you the deafening silence now, but I'd be accelerating them, which is not what I want to be doing. And then I thought about it for a second, and I will have a window to blow up deafening silence on the turn where I copy. So I don't want to do that. Okay. So they're coming out of the gates hot. Three cards left in the opponent's hand. Yikes. So they're swinging for seven. I'm going to 11. I could be dead on my next turn. All right, we're just going to pass here. So by passing, I get to hold up a Seiju, but also Atawara. Okay. Is that lethal? 13. It is, in fact, lethal. I don't think I can win that now. Okay, so they had a very good curve this game. Uh, I cannot block. I'm just trying to think through my options. So I'm going to cycle Vizier. Untap the Lotus Field. Draw. Dig. Okay, so that was actually wasn't too bad. So what I can do now is tap these. And bounce the eagle. If they have another spirit, I think. Or it would have to be another rattle chain. And then after this is bounced, I can cast dig. So if they play the eagle, uh, I would go to one. 
Put a cast egg. So it's only five cards out of graveyard, but we have a brawl. So I do meet the requirements for casting the dig through time. We need this to resolve if we're going to win. I have to hit like hidden strings plus action spell. And I did not hit hidden strings. So that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, so we'll take the pour here. And then I guess mystical dispute. None of those other cards are any good. All right, pass the turn. Draw. That was good. Okay, so I think we just start off on cycling vizier. Draw. Wow, that was perfect. So now we blow up the deafening silence. And this Brawl just making the Viseju and the Atawaras look so good. Can't spell Qualler this. So we know that they have the Eagle and then two Unknowns in hand. So we're going to copy here. And I can cast Hidden Strings with Mystical Dispute back up. So we're dead to Spell Qualler plus Counterspell. But I can't believe we're even in this spot right now. We had to get pretty lucky to even be here. Oh, I can't dispute that. So we died due to uh, the mana we gave them from Daphne's. That said, I couldn't win anyway. Um, so if I play Hidden Strings first, it, it just wouldn't have worked. Um, regardless. I guess I have to hope that they choose not to pay three. Maybe I shouldn't have shown them this because there is a third game. But I mean, honestly, I am shocked that we were even in this position. Like, I think that shows the power of these new lands. All right, so we lost, not the end of the world. Uh, so it's also apparently called Lofty Denial, fun fact. Um, but they had a very good curve. They had Deafening Silence into two drop, three drop, double two drop. Like, that was a strong curve out of them. And we were still in the game. So can't be too upset about that. And now we're just going to run it back. So I was drafting a bunch, and in order to build my decks, I switched it back to Pile View. But what I've been doing is the Card View recently. I don't know why I didn't think about switching it back at the beginning of the video, but I've been doing this, and I've been really liking it. Uh, do I have a card down there? I don't. But I've been doing this, and I, I find it to be a little bit more helpful for me personally. Uh, plus, it's easier for you, to the viewer, to see the cards. So I think it's worth it. It's just like impossible to uh, build a draft deck this way, but also see your sideboard cards. It's definitely much better for Constructed to have it set up as card view. Okay, on the play for the final game of this league. I'm going... Oh, double besage you. Uh, just realized that. Hmm. I think that went from a keep to a mulligan. Yeah, let's go to six. All right, we're going to try this out. Obviously, I need to get a little bit lucky here, but I think that this is a key. Spark channel pass. We need to hit land number two. Island. Mausoleum Wonder, okay. Okay, that was good. Um... I think I just play the Grazer. You could jam the Scrying there. I just don't think that's the right move. And pass the turn. All right. So Grazer holds them back. And here we can play Scrying, and they can't counter it with the Wanderer. They can make me pay one, but that doesn't matter. Pass the turn. And the dispute wasn't a bad draw. Our next turn is likely just draw go. And then we'll copy Lotus Field and try to dispute something on their turn. I think I'm just going to take draw. Yeah, all right. So we're passing here. Uh, is it actually better to play the Balagad? Would mana number seven help versus Wanderer? It might. Yeah, I'm going to play the land. I think mana is going to be a choke point. 
Sailor, okay. We still have three cards in hand. Four cards after draw step. So I'm at 14. They currently have seven damage cards. Okay. Block. Take five down to nine. Oh, come on. Oh, geez. I can't dispute that because they'll counter it with the Wanderer. I think we just lost. I have to drop a Seiju. Right, draw. Damn. So, I could. I guess I'm not dead yet. Like, there's a world where I live here. So if they play a spirit next turn, take three, five. I have five outs in my deck. Hmm. So if uh, if I play the poor, I can float two mana. The problem with that is if they play a spirit and counter with the mausoleum wonder, I have no action spell. So I think I'm just supposed to pass. And hope to hit one of my five outs. Obviously, Viseju would be better than Atawara when I don't have any mana, but because Atawara would put me down to just a single Lotus Field. Okay. Uh, I think I might be dead to that. So if I block here, take eight, go to one. Block the Wanderer. So appear into the abyss is off the menu. Come on, deck, please give me Besaju. Draw. It's Besaju. Okay. Um. Maybe we start on hidden strings to look innocent. We really need this hidden string to resolve. Come on, just let it go. Damn. Okay, so I can besage you the deafening silence and then mystical dispute, but we're dead to the mausoleum wanderer. I guess I'm not dead. Um never mind, I still have life. I mean it's pretty unlikely, but it's possible. So they would mausoleum wanderer and then we would go hidden strings in a pour and we'd have to win the game off of these two cards. Super unlikely, but it's possible. Okay. So I guess there is a silver lining where if I can remove the spell caller later, um, I can get another hidden string back. Okay, hidden strings. Oh, come on. Damn. All right, so we, we didn't get the 5-0. I'm gonna draw three. Just because I would like to see what the hidden strings or the poor pages would have been. One, two, three. Oh my. One, two, three. This is looking pretty good. Poor again. So and then we would have to dig through time. So seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe we wouldn't have got there because that seven. Would have been like Vizier plus Recovery. Which might have been enough mana to pour one more time. Because I don't think we could have geared. We're at one. So it appears not an option. So let's draw three more. One, two, three. Which would have been... Oh, wow. So it's tough to say, but we might have actually been able to win that. That's crazy. Okay, so we went 4-1. Uh, this list felt really, really good. We faced a incredibly difficult matchup in round five. Uh, if if you've played Pioneer Lotus Combo before, you know how tough the Spirits matchup is. They added Deafening Silence, which should make it like unwinnable, like bury you in the ground. Between Besaju and Ottawara, we were really in those games. So I'm really impressed by these new lands. I think that this is definitely the way you should be building your deck. It's sort of a bummer we didn't face any aggro decks for March or any black decks for Leyline. But I loved this deck list. It felt so good to me. Let me know what you thought. 
thanks for watching and i truly mean it i would register this in a challenge tomorrow this deck list is so good thank you for watching see ya hey brian cook here i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe but also follow the social media channels down below if you want to support this content directly i would recommend going to the epicstorm.com shop and if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.